Hi everyone, this is Teo, aka Parker from parkablocks.com. Today I will be talking about sketchbook specifically on how you would choose a sketchbook, the things that you will look out for when you choose a sketchbook. I will be going through several sketchbooks of mine and talk about them. So this video is for those people who are interested in drawing a sketchbook they want to get started or they want to do some journaling watercolor works inside the sketchbook so let's start with a sketchbook now the first thing you should note when choosing a sketchbook is to pick the size what size would you want now sketchbooks come in different sizes they are the compact size this one is about A6 in size just for comparison this one is A5 so the more compact size A6 will definitely uh, be easier to put in your bag. They are light and can go anywhere. So then we come to the A5 size, which are the the more the more common size that uh that I personally use because they are the pages are bigger, so you can afford to draw a bit more detail in it. These are A5 sketchbooks. Of course, if you uh, like a larger area to draw, we have the even larger sketchbooks. For example, this two. This one is a Strathmore Max Media 400 uh, sketchbook, and this is a A4 Moleskine watercolor sketchbook. So some this sketchbook can, is quite big, and it opens up. Since it's A4 sketchbook, it opens up into A3. So you can get to draw it on an A3 size area not not an A3 paper but A3 size area so this sketchbook will allow you to really draw a lot of details especially if you are into line work uh, you really can squeeze in a lot of detail now the mentality for drawing inside a small sketchbook is very different from drawing inside a large sketchbook like this so inside a small sketchbook let me show you some drawings the key is about simplification so because the pages are so small you cannot squeeze in all the details so you have to know what to leave out so these are some of my sketches for example this is a sketch I drew inside a bookstore where they were having a talk so for example the books on the shelves I just represented them with just one vertical stroke uh, these are just basic shapes of buildings in Singapore at the, the cityscape. So things like this, this is a rather complicated sketch so I try to squeeze in a lot of details inside this small sketchbook and inside it can get very frustrated because when you are trying to draw very small you have to draw it very carefully and it's uh, it's really a test of patience actually so for people who like to paint big uh, it will take a while to get used to a small sketchbook this is a very simplified uh, sketch of a university campus so usually I like to use this sketchbook for very simple drawings just to play with the colors play with the shapes to also to help uh, challenge myself to simplify my drawings so that's a very small sketchbook. Sometimes I bring that with me um, when I have a smaller bag, bring out a smaller bag. Now on a larger sketchbook, for example, this A4 sketchbook. Now this is an A4 sketchbook uh, by Moleskin. So this one opens up into double A4. Uh, and this is actually not A3. A3 would be more portrait so. so this is the double A4. So uh, as you can probably see, I can you can manage to squeeze in more detail on a sketchbook like this so some of these sketches probably takes me about one hour to two hours to draw sometimes if I'm drawing a double pitch uh, spread let me see if there are any double yeah so for example this double pitch spread would take me about um, three hours I will spend about one and a half or one hour on the lines and then uh, another one and a half hours on the watercolor 
So uh, this is the thing you should take note of when you are drawing on an A3 sketchbook because you are definitely going to take more time to finish drawing on the page itself. Now the nice thing about the A3 sketchbook is it's quite because the pages are so big, your artwork will is going to appear very big, and it is going to look uh, more immersive, and it will have more impact to the audience who are looking at it. Uh, one thing to note also is when you are having such a big canvas, uh, illustrations or drawings that are more detailed, for example, will look nicer. Those with less detail are uh, might be a challenge to, for example, this these two paintings of clouds. If you have less detail on the page, sometimes it can look a bit loose. So this sketchbook is good for people who like to draw big, who likes details and who wants like more impact in their artwork. So these are the three different sizes. Common sizes, I think there are bigger, bigger even bigger sketchbooks than the A4. A5, A4, and A6, the small one. Let me take. Okay, the second point I want to talk about is um, the binding of the book. There are different types of binding. Uh, let me take a look at this. The most common type would be the, the spiral binding uh, versus the, let's say, the, well, the stitch binding or the so called perfect binding. So wire binding. Wire binding we have these wires that just grabs the paper on the side using the holes. So a good thing about wire binding is you can they can open flat easily. And you can hold them and draw uh, with one hand easily as well because the pages can just flip and go over to the other page. For example, this is a sketch I held in my that I drew while I was standing. So these people were queuing up for some goodie bags and I was just holding my sketchbook like this and just drawing away. And compared to let's say a paper bag, uh, the, the perfect bound sketchbook like this, if I was to do the same thing, I'll be holding a sketchbook like this. And sometimes it can get heavy and it's a bit unwieldy because you only have one hand to hold and the other hand to draw. This is for standing up. So if you are just putting it on a paper on the table, there's no difference. Now the second thing about the sketchbook uh, of the wire bind is that it's uh, it's very difficult to it's you, you can't draw across the gutter. Uh, the gutter will interrupt your drawing. So I know that there are artists who do like really beautiful drawings across the gutter, but personally I think that the wire in the middle. Uh, I don't know, interrupts the drawing and makes it uh, it's un unsightly and also when you're scanning this sketchbook you will see that this part of the wire lifts the paper uh, at this side is this edge here a bit upwards so some scanner they need the paper to be in contact with the scanning glass surface so those paper that are lifted a bit off the surface, they may appear a bit blur or darken. This only appear uh, happens to some scanners, for example, the Canon LIDE scanners. Epson scanners, not so much. Epson, you can the paper can still leave a bit, and it will still scan quite clearly. So this is consideration uh, to take note of when you are scanning. Or the thing is, you don't draw too close to the edge, then you can get the paper to lay flat on your scanner. Personally, this is not my preferred type of sketchbook because I, I just don't like wire binding. Okay, then we have the perfect binding. So perfect binding is basically uh, the paper are stitched together. They are grouped together and then stitched and then many of these groups, they are called section, are then uh, put together, grouped together into a book. So we have this one is perfect bind sketchbook. This one is Steelman and Burn Alpha, so you can tell uh, by the stitch marks uh, here. 
and the good thing for some some of these sketchbook can open flat for example this one can open flat but some cannot so you really have to try it out at a bookstore if you are able to and the good thing about this uh, binding is it's quite durable some are bound really very good so for example this Stillman and Burns sketchbooks have a really good binding uh, good binding as in you can you can open the book and just push it all the way back so sometimes you may have difficulty uh, like flattening uh, making the book totally flat so with this technique uh, this technique is only for Stillman and Burns uh, sketchbook by the way you can try it on other sketchbook at your own risk but uh, Stillman and Burns sketchbook you can do you can really open all the way flat and go all the way behind so you can use this to like uh, season your sketchbooks let me take a look at other sketchbooks uh, this is also a Stillman and Burns sketchbook so uh, if it doesn't open flat uh, you just can just do this but I will not recommend it for other brands of sketchbook so and binding oh yeah one more thing about binding then there's the, there are this type of sketchbook sketch pads actually that it uses just the glue binding so there is no binding to be uh, there's no actual binding you just put this glue tape and just glue all the pages together now the thing about this sketchbook is the pages are meant to be torn off so it is not for long-term storage it's not durable the more you flip through the pages the more likely the pages are going to come off for example yeah and these are the type of sketchbooks that you should not be buying if you want to store your artworks for example for example once uh, about a few years ago I took one of these sketchbooks to Cambodia the glue binding sketchbook this is the one I didn't realize it back then that this is going to be a problem um, but now you can see that this one it is this particular sketchbook you can see that the Oops. The glued surface actually uh, came off came off the spine so yeah the artwork now looks like this when it should have been when it should look like this so be careful about the binding always get a durable a sketchbook with a durable binding uh, definitely the spiral is quite durable as well I just don't like the scanning part on the flipping part and the gutter, pitch gutter okay let's see um, let's talk about the paper bag versus hard cover uh, sketchbook can come in paper bag as well as hard cover let me take out the paper bag sketchbook to compare I have several, I only have a few paper bag sketchbooks uh, my favorite are still hard covers so for example this is a Hardcover. This is a global art materials hardcover sketchbook called the handbook. And this is a Strathmore, um, what is this? 400 series watercolor journal. So this one comes in paperback and hardcover. I bought the wrong one. When I bought this, I did not realize that the hardcover version for this 400 series watercolor journal exists so this is the paperback and yes you can bend the, bend the back so what is the difference between these two um, uh, when you're drawing indoors you're laying this against the table you are you have a support so there's not much deeper difference but when you are outdoors and um, when you're outdoors when you're drawing let's say you're sitting on your stool and putting the book on your lap then, then the one the paperback the back will be more flexible and they will move when you draw on them so imagine if you are using a pen and you're drawing on this sketchbook that is on your on your leg and when you push down against the surface the surface will move so you have to take into account of that 
and sometimes it can be quite challenging when you're just drawing and you're using a brush and the and the surface move it means your brush is moving and the surface is also moving so it can be very uh, challenging to control your strokes but <clears throat> paperback I have nothing against them just that they are not as convenient uh, when you are outdoors I would say definitely go for a hard cover if you can okay the next point I want to talk about is let me take a look at the orientation of the sketchbook sketchbooks come in uh, different orientation that can be portrait for example this would be a portrait one portrait size and then there will be square format and then there will be the landscape uh, landscape format so the landscape format they will open up into a panorama a white panorama which is good if you want to capture white scenes but also you can just draw on a single page which is a simple small landscape so on this sketchbook I actually drew across both pages uh, most of the time let me show you something another landscape this one is the A4 Moleskine so for this sketchbook um, sometimes I just draw on a single page a single page you can is a very simple portrait this one is about I think 4x3 or 3x2 format so it lets you draw a simple landscape uh, picture as well but if you want to go uh, panorama you can do that as well because this sketchbook allows you to do, do so such as this the panorama allows you to capture a wider scene so this is good if you want to capture a lot of details and for portrait size sketchbooks let me see for example yep, this one is a portrait size sketchbook mm, yeah the portrait size sketchbooks they will just open up into a rather squarish format but if you are going to be drawing on a single page then example this uh, your subject usually uh, you have to choose a subject that is um, vertical and sometimes uh, this is not a very um, how should I say uh, preferred format of mine I prefer to draw a bit wider and if I'm drawing a bit wider I don't want to draw across the gutter so uh, I tend to choose the landscape sketchbooks so this one is for more vertical subjects and your landscape is for more horizontal subjects okay next point i talk about the paper weight uh, paper comes in different weight so some paper are light some are heavy the light weight paper are, tend to be thinner and the heavy weight paper will be thicker so for example we have here the the global art materials handbook uh, this is not a watercolor journal so i use this for pen and ink this one is, should be about 150 gsm the paper weight is measured in uh, weight this is 150 gsm so we can take pencil and ink quite well and this the weight allows you a little bit of leeway to use watercolor washers and for thicker paper like the 200 gsm we have to go back to the for example the moleskin again this one is 200 200 gsm so the moleskin watercolor sketchbooks are 200 gsm so the paper weight is thicker and because it's thicker it's also a bit uh, you get less warping so when I apply a lot of wash on this page of paper you can see that it can still remain relatively um, flat the surface still remains relatively flat so the paper weight is important when doing watercolor washes because um, if you are doing a wash on a lightweight paper for example this is a Stillman and Burn sketchbook I uh, use this for some watercolor sketches also you can see that I'm not sure if you can see some of these uh, pages are a bit wavy 
and because they are wavy um, the water the wash when you apply it uh, it will move down to the lowest part of the uh, paper and then the pigment will gather there and when it dries it will form the back run I'm going to show you some examples of that Okay, not, I'm not sure if you can see this. This uh, there's no background, but because the paper is um is, has warped a bit, you will tend to see the pigments gather. You can see this. Uh, there's higher concentration here, higher concentration here of the blue, and also here. That's because these are the lower parts of the paper, and the paper goes there. So um, 200 gsm. This is 150 gsm. Then we have the heavy weight, heavy weight 300 GSM paper. These are very good, so they will not warp, and they are very good for just like uh, washes. They stay flat even if you apply a lot of water, and that's what I like about them. Okay, uh, one thing to note about this is that the paper weight does not um, uh, a good quality paper does not need to be heavy weight and a heavy weight paper does not mean that it is a good quality paper so there are some 300 gsm thick paper that are very lousy in quality it means the surface is not treated that well and when you do multiple washers on it it's the paper the paper fiber comes out so that doesn't have to do with the weight of the paper at all and talking about that let's talk about the different types of paper that you can find inside the sketchbook uh, our sketchbooks usually come with uh, either normal paper or cartridge paper cartridge paper would be a uh, higher end of paper that is meant for drawing and illustrations so you can use pencil pencil on it or even ink on it those would be the cartridge paper so for example we have the steelman and burn again uh, this is a cartridge paper so 150 gsm white cartridge paper so you can take watercolor quite well as well even though it's not specifically treated for watercolor it does uh, take watercolor quite well then we have the watercolor paper Watercolor paper, there are several types as well. So if you want to use watercolor on watercolor paper, then you it's best to get a watercolor sketchbook. This one is watercolor paper. So this one is thicker. This one is 300 GSM. Watercolor paper uh, differentiates by two types. So there can be a cotton watercolor paper. Sometimes they will have cotton content. The cotton makes the paper more durable and stronger. So this is a... Uh, 100% non-cotton watercolor sketchbook but this one's still uh, quite uh, surprisingly quite durable surprisingly because I managed to get a few layers of washes on it and the paper fiber still remains intact this one is quite impressive uh, Strathmore 400 series non-cotton watercolor sketchbook then we have the again the uh, mixed cotton and wood based uh, paper this one is the again, most skin sketchbook they have 25% cotton so they are slightly more durable so you can layer a few washers on them then we have the total 100% cotton uh, sketchbooks now sketchbooks with 100% cotton are very very rare uh, I only have two out of my, I don't know, 10 dozen of sketchbooks. So one of which is the perfect sketchbook. They are so rare that while my friend actually created a Kickstarter to produce one of these 100% uh, cotton sketchbooks. This one is uh, this one is called the perfect sketchbook. That's the name of this sketchbook. This one uses 100% 100 cotton uh, content for the paper. So it is very durable and it's quite thin as well. But I like the colors that come out and 
advantage, main advantage for this sketchbook is it's very durable so you can lay a lot of washers on it and the paper fiber will not come out and then we have the other 100% cotton sketchbook this one is the Pentelic uh, watercolor journal 300 GSM 100% uh, cotton sketchbook I think this one is no longer being made but you will have to email Pentelic to find out because I bought this on Amazon they are now out of stock for a long time this one the paper is thick as well and it's very durable colors come out quite well so if you want something durable uh, go with a co more cotton and if you want something in the middle go for mixed cotton sketchbooks and so the type of paper now watercolor paper is actually a uh, treated paper so by treated I mean there's some there's this concept called sizing where they apply a coat of gelatin to the to the paper so this makes the paper um, absorb the pigments better hold the pigments better and also provides a bit affects the colors a bit so sometimes you can get more vibrant colors on the paper itself so watercolor paper would have um, <clears throat> also comes with three types of surfaces one would be the smooth surface that is called hot press so and then the more common type would be cold press where we have some light texture going on it this one is a cold press uh, cold press sketchbook so there's some light texture on it so when you paint your watercolor on it you can get some patterns very nice patterns granulation patterns uh, stuff like that and then there is the rough uh, paper that is very rough um, I don't use that because I find it, those are more for painters because you cannot use pen and ink on it because the paper surface is so undulating when you're drawing your pen on the on the paper surface your pen will also be going like this and you will not be able to achieve a totally straight line as compared to cold press which is mildly textured fine grain paper you will still be able to get a fine straight line uh, easily not so with a uh, rough paper and rough paper sketchbooks are also quite rare so the more common type of paper would be uh, the cold press mildly textured fine grain paper and some paper can take water well and some uh, not so well you really have to try it out even though for example steelman and burn is a very good example of a sketchbook that is not watercolor paper but can take watercolor uh, quite well uh, this one is a hard uh, landscape one I also have a Steelman and Burn Alpha uh, portrait one which I use to do some color studies so because it takes colors well uh, even though it's not watercolor paper but it takes color well I use this for some color studies the colors come out quite accurate on this one and this has a lot of pages so it's very good for color studies okay now just now i mentioned something about the cartridge paper uh, cartridge paper they also come with either smooth or just fine grain paper with some texture so if you are using uh, pencil stand it would be better to get the fine grain paper because there's the texture uh, you can draw on that makes it mix the how do I say you can get pigment off your pencil or color pencils more easily as compared to a uh, smooth surface paper okay let's go on to the next point which I cannot remember so I have to look at my list here uh, oh mixed media paper um, there's a mixed media sketchbook around okay yeah it's this one now usually I don't use mixed media paper because even though they say that it's good for wet and dry media uh, the mixed media paper that I use so far most of the mixed media paper that I use 
they are only good for dry media uh, because mixed media is not watercolor paper they are not treated uh, for watercolor work sometimes the water may just run on the surface because the paper does not absorb the water uh, this one is Strathmore Mixed Media 100% Cotton I have not used this yet but looking at the surface I think this one can take water quite well anyway I will be reviewing this book as well as uh, many of the sketchbooks I've featured so far have been already have already been reviewed on my website you can just do a search for the sketchbook uh, on my website so that's what I want to say about Mixed Media they are mostly good for dry media not for wet media if you really want to do mixed media, I would suggest going for watercolor paper because watercolor paper you can use pen, pencil, ink, color pencils and water so some color pencil artists actually use watercolor paper because the, there are so many manufacturers and the quality for the paper uh, you can get to choose from a lot and the quality generally speaking is much higher so some artists, some color pencil artists actually like to use watercolor paper. Okay, let's take a look at next talking. Okay, color of the paper. Uh, some of the sketchbooks are not totally white in color. I would have to show, I would have to compare to let you see the difference. For example, uh, this is the Steelman and Burn Alpha. This one is white in color. So let's compare it against a sketchbook that is not white in color. This one is the Delta. Yeah, some of these sketchbooks are just plain black, so you it's very difficult to differentiate uh, what one between and uh, between the other. This one is off white. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me just compare the color of the paper, so you can see that. This one is white and this one is uh, off-white, a bit slightly yellowish, a bit more creamy so it gives the drawing a bit, uh, makes the drawing a bit warmer. So here's an example of another off-white paper, this one is a bit more creamy as well, mm. makes the drawing warmer. Um, there popular most skin water color sketchbook is also off white so yeah I think it doesn't affect the drawing as much um, but it does give it a subtle subtle tone subtle warm tone to it so I'm not sure sometimes I like to use off white sometimes I like to use uh, white there's no preference for me really And then let's talk about okay. Let's look at some of the features of the sketchbook. Now you will notice that some of the sketchbook are cloth bound, and some are just I don't know. They have this fake texture surface on it. And I'm not sure about cloth bound or cloth bound is uh, much nicer to hold. And this one is also nice to hold, but I just cloth bound is very nice to hold. Yeah. Yeah, you'll notice that some of the sketchbooks they have that are rounded corners uh, no very specific purpose but I think it's a very nice touch but art wise I think it doesn't really help with the art so but it's a nice touch so this one has a rounded surface as well as the perfect as well as these two the perfect sketchbook also rounded corners this one has rounded corners then the steelman and alpha have the sharp corners oh here's another pentelic sketchbook uh, this one is for dry media only so this one also has square corners uh, claire fontaine square corners let's see uh, you'll notice that some of these sketchbooks they have this rubber band the rubber band is nice because it keeps their covers together so it does hold down their paper, the pages together very nice thing and then some of the sketchbooks they will also have this they have this ribbon thing going on I don't use the ribbon that much oh for this particular pentatic uh, watercolor journal they have uh, besides the rubber 
they have this uh, rubber holder, elastic holder for you to put your put your brush to store your brush. Quite nifty. Some of these sketchbook would have a have a pocket behind for you to put stuff. Uh, sometimes I like to put stuff. For example, what did I put here? Mm, oh, let me show you a easier one. This is the ha handbook. So this one has a plastic pouch behind. I used to keep stuff like the name cards of restaurants that I go to or name cards of people or other sketches that I need uh, so that I can remember uh, when I look back at the sketches. At least I have some name cards or if I meet someone then I can put their name cards here. So we have the rounded corners, the carvers and then, oh, this one is also a cloth bound. This one is quite thick. Talking about thickness, um, should you choose a thick sketchbook or one that is uh, thinner, much thinner? Uh, some sketchbooks come like with 48 pages. 48 pages would, for example, be the Strathmore sketchbook that I was using just now. This one is 48 pages now. Because the paper weight is thick, that's why you have less pages, but each piece of paper is also has more quality. So 48 pages is quite uh, quick to fill up. So then we have the moleskin. Moleskin usually have 72, 72 pages. Uh, 72 pages, so they are thinner. But if you compare it, the 200 GSM versus 300 GSM, they are about the same, same thickness. Yeah, so this one has small pages to draw on. Then of course we have the 100 over pages sketchbook, and this one is a 400 pages sketchbook now. This one I uh, will not uh, probably will not recommend if you are going outdoors, uh, going for outdoor sketching. I would say do not use uh, such a thick sketchbook. I mean this is this is too heavy to bring out. So I only leave this book at home to draw. So I don't never bring out this book. This book is too heavy. So I usually bring out the more compact size sketchbooks, the smaller A5, or if I'm in the mood, the bigger A4. And with smaller size uh, sketchbooks, you can put them in smaller bags. So for larger sketchbooks, you really need a much larger bag uh, to store them. Okay, I think I have about covered about all. Uh, oh, one thing I want to talk about is the price of these sketchbooks. Um, they range from 10 plus dollars. I think the most skin sketchbook, this particular one. This one is about, I'm not too sure because it, the price depends on where you buy it from I uh, am from Singapore So uh, the most skin sketchbook is very expensive here in Singapore So I tend to buy them from Book Depository Which includes shipping and they happen to sell most skin sketchbook I think it's about US $15 and above or around there I cannot uh, tell you the exact price because the price always changes with some discounts but if you want to check out the prices for all the sketchbook that I have reviewed just uh, follow the links to the detailed reviews below this YouTube video so this one is about 10 plus to this one is less than $20 okay less than $20 and we have a straf more uh, this handbook is also less than $20 so which one is more worth it? 72 pages or 124 pages? Um, I would say don't do not let the price dictate your dictate your uh, purchase uh, choices. Make a decision because if you are not going to be drawing so frequently, um, like if you are going to finish one sketchbook like in two months, you are not a very frequent sketcher, then then I would say it doesn't really matter, the price doesn't really matter because you are only going to be buying one sketchbook every two months. 
So make that a good sketch work, buy a durable one and that's it. So this one, but don't get too expensive sketchbook uh, also because um, some of the sketchbook might not be worth it. So this one is a perfect sketchbook. I think when it was on Kickstarter, it's about 25, 20 to 25 US dollars. Now 20 to 25 US dollars, you can get an A5 sketchbook. And uh, this guy here, this Claire Fontaine watercolor sketchbook may not be 100% cotton, but it has 200 pages versus 72 pages. So this one is US $25. This one is much less than US $25. So this one is more worth it. And this is really quite an expensive sketchbook. And uh, sometimes when you're buying an expensive sketchbook, you are you can be a little afraid to make the first mark on the blank page so but price i think sometimes is a good gauge on the quality of a sketchbook i mean paper is expensive i mean 100 percent cotton paper is very expensive so sometimes the price uh you do get what you pay for and for higher price i sketchbooks um sometimes that quality is a bit better but not necessary so so sometimes you can get cheap sketchbooks at a very good price for example cheap sketchbook at good prices would be the example of uh, most skin sketchbooks are quite good for the price the global art material sketchbook this one this one is from the manufacturer called global art material uh, this one is quite reasonable, reasonably priced and it's very value for money this one is called the... I don't know this one is also called handbook but you can search for it and as a watercolor journal search for global art materials watercolor journal anyway the link is under this video so this one is quite a good sketchbook some people prefer the skin and personally I prefer this global art material sketchbook this one is quite uh, really value for money then we have the straf mod that we talked about earlier where was it where is it cannot find it now mm. oh mm. the straf mod this one is quite worth it this one is the 500 series and the uh, 400 series so this is also quite worth the money mm, let's see then we have the more expensive uh i think steelman and burn sketchbook are a bit more expensive but they are also uh value for money because these are very well say durable sketchbooks very well made and they are worth really worth the money I mean, Turn it oh okay I can bend this properly. Anyway, I bend it like this. This is how good their sketchbook uh, sketchbooks are. Very durable. So price wise these are a bit higher but I think they are worth it. I usually fill up one sketchbook like in two to three months so the slightly higher starting price does not really I do not really take that into account. I mean, I do not spend a lot on sketchbook because I only buy like one every three months. So, yeah, so that's it. Get a good sketchbook. I think that is all for this uh, video. So, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below. And I am not specifically recommending any sketchbooks because um, sketchbook is a very personal thing the sketchbook that i like may not be the one that you like so some people prefer a5 some a4 some people prefer white paper some prefer the creamy paper so some love the most skin i am not a big fan of them because i've seen other sketchbooks so i don't have any recommendations but all the sketchbooks that i have uh, I have reviewed 
the links the detailed links are in the description below so you can click them to find out all to look at all the sketches that I've done in any particular sketchbooks and uh, maybe through the through those reviews you will find a sketchbook that you may like and then try them so but but in a separate video I will be looking at all the different brands of the sketchbook and talk about them very briefly just to give you uh, maybe a sense of what a uh, sense of the types of sketchbooks that are the brands and products that are out there in the market currently so that will be in a separate video so i hope you find this video helpful and if you have any questions remember to just post them and thank you for watching subscribe to my youtube channel to get more updates on upcoming videos and also uh, you can help me by subscribing helping me on patreon the link is below as well thank you for watching see you next time